so Pastor Max, this couple of weeks, he's been talking about, sharing about persistent faith. Amen? So he's gone through this. You can go on our website. You can take it down. You can read it. Uh, read it. You can listen to his teaching all over again. But this is a, two slides of a summary, right? So persistent faith is determined. Do you remember him saying that? Can you see him saying that to us all, right? It is persistent, determined, resolute, tenacious, obstinate, obstinate, tireless. Okay, this is a word like aluminum I can't pronounce. <laughs> Indefabable. <laughs> and we're going to laugh this morning. This word means it never gets tired. You can't fatigue faith. All right, so afterwards, many of you, you're going to come to me and say, Pastor Connie, this is how you say this word. And I'll be appreciative of that. My Italian, sometimes in my brain, my Italian and my English go like this. And it's like a lunar. I couldn't, when I was a kid, when I was a child, I couldn't even say shoulder. I would say shoulder. So that's my problem, not yours. <laughs> All right, so persistent, determined, resolute, tenacious, obstinate, tireless. Thank you, <laughs> from the professor at university. Uh, dogged faith, right? There's a saying that our faith is dogged faith. So you, have you had anybody heard, heard of that? Dogged faith. You know, what does faith and dogged? So there was an old um, saying that Winston Churchill, you know, prime minister of, of uh, Britain during the Second World War, and he said that, he has the resolute during the Second World like, like a bulldog. And I always remember this quote from uh, Winston Churchill. It says, we have to be tenacious, like uh, obstinate, like a bulldog. And that stuck in my mind. So when Pastor Max put this out, dogged faith. And it's, you use that word together with a bulldog. And if you ever look into the anatomy of a bulldog, I hope I'm not boring you, but I get to the point. Uh, um, their teeth are slanted backwards, backwards. So when they hang on to something, they just hang on to it. So that's why it's dogged faith, right? And that's why I have that picture of that cutie little pie, the little bulldog there, and his teeth. He's missing a few of his teeth. I understand that. But if we were opened up his mouth, his um, teeth are slanted backwards. So dogged faith, I thought, why bulldog faith? Have you heard that expression, bulldog faith? I went and I did some research. So this is why it's called bulldog faith. Tenash, ten, being um, uh, tenacious, right? Like a bulldog. You've heard of that, right? 18th century. There was a sport in England, and it was called bull uh, grazing, something like that, okay? And I, bull dazing, bull grazing. I've got a picture of it. It's the next one. You see that? 18th century they would get a big bull. This was a sport, right? You heard the sport of when two chickens, you know, like they, they fight and they're bets. Okay, in England, it was a bull and they would chain it to the ground and they would throw dogs at it. And, then, and so they had to make a breed of a dog that would be so tenacious so what happened is that they produced these bull dogs, dogs that would attack bulls for money. And they would, they would uh, have bets. And I thought, oh my God, so if you read, I know this afternoon this is what you're going to do. You're going to have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and while you're munching on a cookie, you're going to Google what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> so they would throw these dogs. So the breed of dog that they created was a bull dog. Teeth uh, slanted backwards, and what they would do, these dogs, amazing. These are two-ton bulls, and they would throw the dog, these dogs going after a bull, and it would hang on to their snout. Like, how can a little dog pull down a, uh, a bull? By hanging on to its snout. 
So the bulldog, yes, I know, it's amazing, right? The kids up here are like, what are you talking about? It would hang on to the, to the bull's snout until it brought it down. And the bull dog, the dog that attacked the bull was called the bulldog. And whoever owned that dog would win. Get it? So these dogs, these massive two-ton bulls, the bigger the better. And I thought, how could this be? And there are other pictures where there are dogs being flown all over the air by these bulls, but the lucky one would hang on to its snout and actually bring it down. They would bring down a t like a little dog. Can you imagine little Toby or little Bella? Like we have a dog, all right? Pulling that down. But these dogs were bred to bring down two-ton animal. That's why it's called dogged faith. You just hang on and you just don't look, go until you bring that problem down. Hallelujah. Now, amen, amen. So this is what pastors were talking about, persistent, persistent faith. Amen. So he's done the, the first four, four, I'm sorry, he's done the first six. If you go to the next slide, please. We're going to go on with his tension. So remember, based on a person, who's the person? Okay, we're going to have to interact. You know how I am, right? It's based on a person. What's faith based on? A person. His name is? Jesus. You get a mark. Okay. And these are the points that he went through in these previous weeks. Takes the initiative. And we're studying two, ver two stories, the Canaanite woman and Bartimaeus, correct? So you take the initiative. This belongs to mine. This belongs to me. Try something different. Bartimaeus, what did he do? He threw his coat, right? He threw what hung him or how he was represented as a beggar. He goes, I'm not going to beg. I'm not blind anymore. So he tried something different. Do you all remember this from pastor's teaching? Passion. Hey, I want to see. So passion, he started shouting. The woman cried out. So the Canaanite woman wanted the healing for her daughter who was demon-possessed, amen? And Barnabas wanted, wanted to see. And I love this one. He finished last week not based on merit. So I could be a miserable human being, which I don't want to be, <laughs> amen? But it's not based on how good or bad I am. His promises are yes and amen, always amen. So it's not based on my merit, amen? Both of these individuals, Bartimaeus and the Canaanite woman, said to Jesus, have mercy on me, okay? And then Matthew 14, 14, when Jesus was in front of the multitudes, he was moved with compassion, amen? I may not know where the scripture is in my Bible. I may not know uh, verse or chapter, but I know it's a promise that belongs to me. He, he's not looking for me to know chapter and verse, which is good that we all know chapter and verse, but he wants us to know that he is a loving God. He wants us to know that he is moved by compassion. He's not moved by my tears. Does it matter how much I cry to God? I have to bring him to, I have to bring his promises into the throne room of grace and say, look at your word. You promised me. You promised me. The devil is behind me, but this is what your word says. Amen. Tears will never move God. It doesn't move God, but your faith will. You believing in him will. So that's a little summary. So we'll go on, all right? So after, not based on merit, Pastor Max wrote this in his wonderful notes. The next slide, please. We overcome all obstacles. Look at that. My S is out of order. That's okay. Overcomes all obstacles. So write that down or take a screenshot of that. We overcome obstacles. How many of you have obstacles this morning? 
some of us can go like this, like this, like this, like this. We have a few obstacles, right? You know, in Luke, the next, uh, the next slide is Luke 18, 30, 39. This is Bartimaeus. He had a few obstacles. And those who were in front scolded him to get him to be quiet. People are the first things that are going to oppose you in your walk with God. People are going to oppose you. And people opposed Barnabas. But that doesn't matter because we overcome all obstacle. I know you have the picture of that bulldog. I know you do. I know you. If there's anything that you get out of it after the service is that you're going to have this image of you being that bulldog hanging on to every single promise of God, and you just don't let go until you get it. And if people stand in your way, you do like that bulldog does. You just hang on. It doesn't matter the crowd around you or who's stopping you or trying to stop you. You're just going to go on. The next verse is from the Canaanite woman. Matthew 15, 23, we've all read the story. Jesus is there, and he doesn't even answer her. And his disciples came and urged him and said, go away. He did not even answer her. So you have, you have people that may try to stop you. But then there are instances where have you sometimes been in situations where God is a little bit more silent than you like? A little bit tweeny weeny, a little bit too much silence on his part. He just gives you the promise. And then it's like sink or swim. I'm sorry, God. A little bit more word. No, you got it. You got faith. I gave you. Jesus live, is living inside of you. So he answered her not a word. You know our loving Jesus, as pastor said, our kind Jesus, our wonderful Jesus, our compassionate passionate Jesus. But I know this, that every single situation is different. When we read the Gospels and we read the epistles, everything is different. There's not one fast rule other than live by faith. You know that my circumstances are different from your circumstances, and yours are different from mine. So we have to get into the Word and say, okay, this applies to me. This applies to me. This applies to you. Sometimes God gives you a promise and then there's silence on the home front, like radio silence, and he just wants you to walk in that word that he's given you. Remember the, the people of Jericho? God said, I'm going to give you this city, and he says, to Joshua goes, this is what I want you to do. He gives them a command. He says, there's a city, I want you to go. And he says, walk around the city seven times. Everybody remember that? Wonderful. Do you know, he said that one word and then he didn't say anything else for the next six days. He didn't go on the scene and encourage them. Hey, Josh, see what you're doing. You're doing a great job, great job, great job. Nothing like that at all. He said the word then he stayed silent, right? And the miracle came. So sometimes God gives you a word, is silent, but if you hang on, the miracle comes. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus is doing something in this scripture, and then we'll talk about it as we go on. So silence from God. So sometimes there are people that are stopping you, and then your mind plays tricks on you because you're thinking, hmm, you're awfully silent, God. You're awfully silent, God. And then what you have to do, you have to get into praise. You have to get into worship. You have to get into trust. You have to say, if your word says it, I'm, I'm in it. Next scripture, Matthew 15, 24, Jesus responded, okay, so now he opens up his mouth. And what does he say? I was only sent to some people. I was on, it was for that time. I was only sent to the lost uh, nation of Israel. Basically, Jesus said, it's not your time yet. But both the Canaanite woman and Barnabas didn't get discouraged. 
I love that. <laughs> People couldn't stop Barnabas. The silence didn't stop the Canaanite woman. The next scripture, I, the next saying, I wrote it up there. This is mine. It's not pastors, okay? So this is mine. <laughs> Passion must, uh, inside must become greater than the obstacle on the outside. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen? Passion, what you know to be true, is greater than the people stopping you or perhaps the silence of God. Because you know the word. You know his promise. When passion on the inside becomes greater than the obstacle on the outside, you'll always win. The bulldog, that bulldog with the slanted teeth, didn't look at the bull, the two-ton bull, and say, whoa, hey guys, I know you bred me for this, uh, but he's like two tons and I weigh 60 pounds. Do you, do you understand? So he didn't look at, he's not looking at the obstacle that is so huge in front of him. He was created to bring the bull down. You were created to have the victory. You were created to overcome. You were created to get onto your problem and bring it down. You were created, it's inside of you. Greater that's inside of you than he that is in the world. So you look at that bull of a problem. You look at that problem. <laughs> you look at that problem and you say, I'm bringing you down. Because I was created for this. I was created to bring you down. Amen. You were created to bring it down. So the passion inside must become greater. How do you get, how do you get that passion greater? In the word, in the word, knowing the scripture, knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit, knowing your father, daddy. Then any obstacle on the outside, when passion on the inside becomes greater than the obstacle on the outside, you always win. Hallelujah. Anybody remember my, um, my bill from um, the water bill? Over $1,400. Guess who's got the victory? Amen. Took that problem down in Jesus' name. That financial down. Hey, man, I, got, I didn't have to do, pay that thing, so I got more to give. Amen? More in my bank account to give. Whoo! Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. The next, so what did I say? I said overcomes obstacles. Now you're thinking about that bulldog, right? The next point to bring out is refuses. The next slide, refuses to give up. Refuses to give up. Our faith refuses to give up. That promise, that, that money in my bank account <laughs> belongs to me and not to the water company. Because I did not waste, I did not use $1,600 worth of water. I absolutely, I, you know, you take a shower for 10 years to get to that amount. Anyway, <laughs> refuses to give up. Bartimaeus shouted even more, hey, Jesus. Shouted it every morning. So we refuse to give up. And you know what? The refusal to give up is in our battles. The refusal to give up is in, see how determined that little cartoon figure is? It's like, I'm going forward. I'm going, the, the refusing is in the battles. It's in the battles. Don't be like that bulldog. You see that thing? You go, okay. Give me a minute, let me, get some, let me get some nutrients in me, and let me go at it. Hallelujah. And the nutrients is the word of God. So the refusing to give up is in the battle. The next slide, we look back at Barnabas. He shouted even more. And those that were in front scolded him to, for him to be quiet, but he shouted even more. Son of David, have mercy on us. Hello, Jesus! Stop! Stop! And then the Canaanite woman in Matthew 15, 25, help me! Sir, help me! It's okay, you can do that to, to God. Hey! 
You're a little bit too silent, but I know your promise. Hey, hey, I'm refusing to give up. Amen. Pleaded again. You see that? She came and worshipped him, and she pleaded again. In some of the battles that we've gone through or going through, I just go into the throne room. Hey, hey, God, Father, Jesus, I'm right here. I know you have, and, and I encourage myself in his presence. I know you haven't forgotten about me. I know, I, I know the promises are mine. Thank you, Jesus. And in his presence, hallelujah, I get that strength to become again that little bulldog to go after my problem. But see, he showered even more, refusing to give up, pleading again, refusing, refusing, refusing. Hallelujah. Rejection did not stamp them. Gosh, if Jesus had said to me, hey, Connie, it's not your time yet, I would go, oh, okay. Oh, if the man of God said it's not my time, oh, okay, go away. But that's not what she uh, did. She said, my daughter is sick. My daughter needs freedom. My daughter, I'm here. You pay attention. I'm here. And the same with Bartimaeus. Rejection didn't stop us, didn't stop them. Does rejection stop you? The problems stop you. There's an old saying, it says, a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. Right? A winner never quits, hallelujah. And a quitter never wins. Hallelujah. How many times did I have to phone the water company? And, it's a, and this is a very silly illustration because we have problems far greater. Some of us are dealing with health issues. Some of us are dealing with important financial issues. Others are dealing with other issues that are much more important than a silly water bill. But how many hours did I spend on the, uh, on the phone with them? Man, nobody, now it's all automated. Uh, we are here from you. Don't you just love this now? Please select your music selection. <laughs> Jazz, soft rock, hip hop, whatever you want. Ch that's supposed to make us feel better, that somebody alive is not picking up our calls. Okay, that's a sermon for another time, okay? I didn't quit. I got $1,600 in my bank account that didn't have to leave. Hallelujah. So Jesus, there's a reason why he said, it's not good to... Uh, um, he answered, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little puppies, right? Throw it to the little puppies. Her faith was being tested. When is our faith tested? Yeah, through the battle. God does not test us with sickness, disease, or poverty, or lack. Amen? He does not. But life is here, and we live in this world. So the testing of our faith comes through this. What does it produce? This is what God, what, this is what Jesus was trying to illustrate in this verse. Come to me and show me what you got. Come to me and show me what you got. Faith is proven through the battle. The testing of our faith produces, the next slide please, endurance. Count it all joy when you come into various trials. So he wants us to actually be happy, actually, and it's very interesting this word, joy, here. You count it all joy. Big difference between joy and happiness. He didn't say count it all happiness, okay? Happiness is attached to our circumstances. I'm happy that I don't have to pay $1,600 of water bill. James here is saying, count it all joy. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Joy is a characteristic of Christ. So he's saying, count it, be joyful 
when you don't see the circumstances going your way. Count it joy. We're not supposed to, uh, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star. That's not how he wants us to act. He wants us to know there is a problem, but be joyful. Be like that bulldog, the problem is coming down. You're coming down. Just let me go and eat a little bit. Um, you're coming down. You're coming down. So James says, count it all joy when you fall, when you fall into various trials. Amen? All right? What does, and then we go on, the next scripture is, because you know the testing of your faith produces what? Ooh. The more I ride, <laughs> if I'm a bulldog, the more I ride the bull, the stronger I get. The more my teeth that were created to slant backwards get into that hide. <laughs> I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. How, do you, how does that bulldog become stronger? Through the battle. How do you and I become stronger? Perseverance through the battle. Another translation says, for you know that when your faith succeeds in facing such trials, the result is the ability to endure. Don't you love that scripture? Translated in the Good News Bible. For you know that when your faith succeeds in facing the trials, and who does not have trials? All of us do. We have that in common. <laughs> Hallelujah. The result is the ability to endure. Sometimes I feel like my battles, there's, there's a scripture that Paul says that God would not test you more than you can endure. Right? Well, what I can endure and what he thinks I can endure sometimes are like a little bit of imbalanced. <laughs> We've gone through some mighty great testing, Pastor Max and, I, and our family, mighty great testing, that I said to God, you know, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, uh, I'm done. I, I have reached what I think I can endure. Thank you very much. I know that you want me to be stronger, the ability to endure, I have perseverance, but I'm a little bit tilted right now, Father God. And then there's silence. What do you do with the silence? You just say, okay, I trust you, Father. Amen. The testing of our faith. Faith is proven and tested, not when the bread and fish are multiplied and turn into a smorgasbord. Say that again. Our faith is proven and tested, not when the bread and the fish are multiplied and turn into a smorgasbord, but when there is silence from God, when there seems to be nothing happening in the daily routine of life. That's when we are being tested, amen? But we know that as we are tested, we will succeed. How many of you know that? How, and, and the testing, the testing is not like, I'm going to get you. Never that. It's the testing of life. It's a, uh, the bulldog did not ask to be created that way. And the bulldog did not ask to be thrown to the bull. He was created for that. He lived in his world like that. But he was created to have the victory. Amen? Hallelujah. The next slide is James again, and it says, let, per let perseverance finish its work in you so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Say not lacking anything. Not lacking anything. Our testing of this life, it's not to take from us. It's to make us better people, better in Christ. And this good news translation is make sure that your endurance carries you all the way without failing. But who makes sure? You make sure. We make sure. Make sure that your endurance carries you all the way without failing so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Say lacking nothing. Will you lack health? No. Will you lack finances? No. Will you lack soundness of mind? No. Will you lack joy? No. 
Every challenge contains an opportunity. Every challenge create, uh, contains an opportunity. Every challenge. You decide on how your opportunity flows. Is it going to be a good opportunity or not so good opportunity? Amen? Now, this is an interesting scripture, Exodus 1.12. This is the story of the Egyptians, I'm sorry, the, um, the Israelites leaving Egypt, all right? And the Egyptians oppressed them before. The more they increased in number, so, but the more the Egyptians oppressed the Israelites, the more they increased in number and the further they spread through the land. <laughs> you see, this testing that we're all going in is just going to make us stronger. Hallelujah. The more we feel pressure, the more I push back. The more you feel the pressure, the more I push back. The more you feel the pressure, the more I push back. Isn't that our attitude? Isn't that what God wants so that we can be a success? Hallelujah. Amen? We convert every problem into a stepping stone. How, how many of you have ever thought, well, there's a problem. There's a problem over here. Oh, let me just step on that problem. Oh, there's another problem over here. Oh, let me step on that problem. Oh, another one over here? Like the end goal is over there. Let me step on that problem. What we, when we see a problem, we go, oh my gosh, there's a problem, and we sink. Oh my God, there's a problem. Oh Jesus, look at this. As if he didn't know that there was a problem. But he's asking us, just go ahead and step on it so that it becomes a stepping stone to where you're going. Just step on it. Oh, another, oh, another, look at that, another opposition. Oh, let me just step on that. Look over there, my, my goal is here. Oh, another, oh, let me just step on that. And so you make problems a stepping stone. Never give up. Yes, your husband will come to the Lord, absolutely. Yes, your children will grow up serving him. Yes, there's more money in the bank so that you can bless people. Yes, your body is 100% well and whole. Yes, we will have a church building in Jesus' name. Yes, 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 and never give up. It's a problem. We're going to step over to the other side. Amen? The next slide, please. Let's read this. Faith is portrayed as a persistent action on the conviction that God, with God's help, it is, to, it is found in Jesus. I'll read that again. Faith is portrayed as a persistent action. Remember that? The stepping stone on the problem, the stepping stone on another problem. Because the conviction is that God's help is to be found with Jesus. The number one thing that we started off with is that faith is a person. Amen? Faith is a person. We pursue his promises. The next slide, please. The next point that pastor wants us to get is that faith has a will power, a strong wish or want for something. Faith and your will power go hand in hand. When we go to, so will power is the next point, right? If we go to the next scripture, Luke 18, 40 says, Jesus stopped and ordered the man, this is Bartimaeus, be brought to him. When he came near Jesus, Jesus asked, um, what do you want me to do for you? Like, Jesus knows that he's blind, but he still asks, what do you want me to do? And his response was, as you know, I want to see. I, what do, that's a strange question, right? I want to see. Remember I said that every situation, every miracle is different, and every one of us gets different points of view out of it. So here, Jesus was asking Barnabas, what's your will? He was asking, what's your will? What do you want? What do you want? Hallelujah. Amen. I want... We have the promises, 
We have the promises. Do you want those promises? A strong desire, a strong want. And Barnabas said, I want this. And the woman said, I want this. What do you want? So your willpower has a lot to do. The next verse, uh, the next slide, it says, so Jesus answered, you are of great faith. What you want will be done for you. Hallelujah. That's the relationship we have with Jesus. What do you want? If it's in God's will, you don't want somebody else's husband or wife, he will give that to you. At that very moment, her daughter was healed. What do you want? The next slide is something that I just want to touch on for a moment. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. See, there's a condition on that, isn't there? It's how close you are with Jesus. How close you are to wanting his will in your life. I can't ask for another has a husband. It's not in his will. I can't ask for something that is not in his will. Amen? So we have to ask according to to his will. And the next slide, remaining, okay? As we remain in Christ, Timothy writes, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. Sound, with willpower, with your willpower, includes your mind, the mind that you were created with. In the Amplified, he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. With willpower, you have to control your mind. You have to control your thought life in faith. You have to. You can't, you see, that bulldog again, his will was to attack that bull because he was created with that. He wasn't looking out into the garden. He wasn't looking at anything else. He was concentrated. So God has given us a spirit of power, of love, of a calm and well-balanced mind and disciplined and self-control. See, the will is part of our mind. What do you want? You have to want it. The next slide, Proverbs 23, 7. This is beautiful. For as he thinks within himself, so is he. You see yourself as a bulldog? Or you see yourself as a mouse running across the fields? What do you see? The controlling of your mind, your willpower. There are four things that keep people in bondage. Fear, ignorance, superstition, and poverty. Where does your mind go? In fear, in ignorance, superstition, Let's just wish upon a star in poverty. You can be poor. You can have a million dollars in the bank and still be poor. It's the attitude of your heart, attitude of your mind. For as he thinks within himself, a sound mind, amen? And you know what? Your mind you can control. I may not be able to control the weather all the time. My daughter, Deborah, knows how to control the weather. When she was a little girl, when we were traveling on airplanes, she commanded the storms to stop. She controlled. We would go to her. Debbie, we're going to go through a, snow, um, a rainstorm. Just please take care of that for us. So she would. So she would. So she would. <laughs> As a person thinks in his hearts, that's who he is. Amen. So let's control. If we want something to happen in our lives, let's control. Let's not be double-minded. And we're almost finished now. Hallelujah. Verse, uh, the next slide, please. The next point is be very specific. Be very specific. The Lord, very, that's the next point. Very, let's hit a few bull, bull, what do you call them? The bullseye, bullseye. Isn't that a nice picture? Well, let's, let's go aim. What, 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 is it, what is it in your life? What is it in your life that you're aiming for? Well, don't be double-minded. Be specific with God. I want this job. I want healing in my body. I need this amount of money to, at the end of the month so that I can be blessed to be a blessing. 
What is it specifically that you want? And this is where me as an ex-Catholic get really, really frazzled on and the wanting because that old man, that old Catholic person, you know, can't ask God too much. He's kind of busy for you, right? I have to be specific. I want this. Because Barnabas says, I want my eyesight. And the Canaanite woman says, I want my daughter healed. Be specific. The next slide is, what do you want me to do for you? I want to see. Jesus knew what the man wanted, but he has to get the man to will to be healed and to respond in faith. Will to be healed and respond in faith. Hallelujah. Jesus knew what the man wanted, but he's getting that out. And that's why the Bible, the, uh, Paul writes, come into the throne room of grace. Come, let's talk. Tell me what you want, because he wants that relationship. He's not our butler, he's our father. God, I need this. God, I, 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 that house, I like that house. I like that guy, or I like this, I like this. So healing in my body, heal. you can't, have health in your body when you eat potato chips for a snack all the time. You can't be healed if, if McDonald's is your go-to meal. It's going to hurt your body, right? But the will, what's your will? Amen? Faith and willpower work together. Willpower keeps faith in focus. Willpower keeps faith in focus. Be single-minded. Clearly know what you want. Faith gives energy and power to our willpower. Faith gives energy. I believe it, Father. Your word says it. These scriptures say it. Yes, it's true. It, gener it um, gives power. It's, it gives gasoline to your willpower so that you can say this next scripture, Matthew eleven twenty three. 23. Oh, right, I surely, whatever you say to this mountain, get up, get up, throw yourself into the sea. Lack, throw yourself into the, lack. Bad relationships, so just go into the sea. Just go, just go. And I believe it, see, I believe it. That, that, that is my will, I believe it. I choose to believe it. I choose to believe that the, electric, that the water company will give me back my money. I did not look at the bill. Man, every month it was getting higher. Man, it was getting, I was right there in front of me. Don't look at the symptoms of your body. Believes what he said will happen. And it goes back to what are you meditating on? Your mind, right? What you think. You're not thinking about poverty. You're not thinking about being ignorant. You're not thinking about the circumstances. Whatever you can believe, you can achieve. Amen. The next scripture, the next slide is, uh, next one. But Jesus looked at, at them and said, with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. If you can believe it, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I like the next slide that I put together. The next slide, <laughs> Matthew 9, 23. Take a picture of this. <laughs> if you can believe it, all things are possible to him who believes. Different translation, all things are possible. Another translation, anything is possible. Another translation, everything is possible. So you have all things, you have anything, and you have everything. I think we're covered. Are we covered? Is there anything left out of that? No. Is your healing covered? Absolutely. Finances are covered? Absolutely. Is a church building covered in that? You're agreeing with us? Is that covered? A, a good marriage, is that covered in that? The right husband. Miss Sandy prayed for a godly husband. She got it. Are you any different? No one. So we have all things, we have anything, and we have everything. I think we're covered. I think we're covered. I think we can be that bulldog that brings down the bull. 
no matter how many tons it weighs. Hallelujah. And then our next point, and then we will get into the Lord's Supper. The next point is gratitude. Faith has to meet gratitude. Gratitude. The art of giving thanks. And gratitude is this way, is upward. Gratitude, thankfulness is upward. Hallelujah. Gratitude, the art of giving thanks. Well, you know, you're looking at that bull, that problem, it is huge. Well, what can you give thanks for? Sometimes we don't give gratitude because we're looking at the problem, all those, step, all those problems that we have to step on. What is it in your life that you can say thank you for? Find it. Find it because then it will open up the floodgates of heaven. Find where you can say thanks to. If you're in a lousy relationship, husband, wife, or going out, if you're lousy, so you're concentrating on that bull that needs to be brought down. At the same time, what can you be thankful for? Do you have gas for, to go in a car? Do you have a good job? What can you be thankful for so that the blessings chase after you? Don't look at the bull that you have to bring down, but look at what you can give thanks for. You, got, you don't have gas in your car? Can you take a bus? Do you have finances for a bus? Everything that you can give thanks for, you're putting the blessing of God over it. You don't think he's going to enlarge you because you got such a great attitude? An attitude of gratitude. Find where you can say thank you. Hallelujah. The next slide. Gratitude. Thankful. A warmly or deeply appreciative of kindness or benefits received, thankful. Isn't that God right here? Like the kindness, not just the love. We don't follow after Jesus or after his word because of what he can do for us. He's not our butler. He is our father. My children don't come to my house just to eat my food. <laughs> hope not our children come to our house because they are welcomed because they want to be there amen and they are thankful they are thankful that they can open up their fridge and take whatever they want or if there's one last thing left over you know that mom and dad are going to give it to them and they are thankful so if you can have that attitude as human parents, we want to bless our children even more. Think of our Heavenly Father, right? So that's the definition of gratitude, appreciative. What are you appreciative of? Hallelujah. I'm sure that bulldog was appreciated that he was created to bring down the problem. Amen. So the next slide, two more slides, and we're done. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise. Watch this. Watch this. When we start glorifying, we glorify because we have received. We glorify. We give thanks. We. What happens? The crowd sees us giving thanks. What happens? We are a witness, just like that song said. We are a witness. Say, I am a witness. I am a witness of the promise that I have obtained, what happens when they see it, they give praise to God. So you, why do we worship? Why we do this? So we can be a witness. So we are grateful. And anything, I've got gas. Don't, do not get into the complaining of your office or at work or at church. Don't complain, be grateful. Don't complain. Be grateful. When we receive the promise and we glorify and worship and have an attitude of gratitude, we, we become a witness so that they can know Christ. 
Do you see how that works? If we're grumbling Christians, how many are we bring into Jesus? None. All right. The next slide, and we'll end with these last two. The next one. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha. Worship your way out of every trouble. Do what the woman did. Do what the woman did. did. The Canaanite woman, Bartimaeus. Our gratitude. Read this. People who see you worship think you're worshiping God because you don't have any troubles. But in reality, is that you're worshiping God because of your trouble. You're worshiping God because of your trouble. The reality is that you're worshiping God because you know that big two-ton bull is there. Confuse your circumstance and confuse the devil by worshiping. He's put, life has dumped, has thrown up all of these problems. It's just like, it just went blah all over you, like blah. Whether you created or whether it was sent by the devil or just, just life, confuse your circumstances. Confuse your own flesh. I'm gonna worship. I'm gonna worship, I'm gonna praise. Because if the devil is confused and circumstances are confused, you know, they may just leave you alone. They don't know which way you're going to go, and we're always going to do worship. So people who see you worship or give praise to God. You know when you are at the office and people want to complain and you stay out of it? You stay out of it? They see something. They may not know the heaviness that you're carrying that morning or that week or those months. The reality is you're worshiping God because of your trouble. Amen? Amen? And the last slide, and we'll just recap, and you can take a picture of this. Persistent faith, what is it? It's based on a person. It takes the initiative. Try something different. It's passionate, not based on merit. Overcomes all obstacles refuses to give up, the willpower, we're specific, and what do we have? Gratitude. Gratitude. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right.